Hi there, Sarah Baldwin here. It's another Sunday with Sarah. Do you ever worry about your child and gunplay? Is your child showing an interest in guns or playing shooting games? And are you worried that that means they might grow up to become violent? Well, if so, you're not alone. I'm here to talk to you today about children and weapon play. Uh, I'm the mother of two boys, and even though I do not, uh, we did not have toy guns in our house, I didn't condone gun play, and yet my boys, as soon as they got to preschool, were shooting each other and shooting their friends, and, and I was very concerned, and I get this question a lot. Um, over my many years as a Waldorf early childhood teacher, I started out by not allowing gun play at all in my classroom, but as I learned from some of my mentors and the more I observed children, that children, boys in particular, not always, but in particular, um, there seems to be nothing we can do to stop it. It's a fascination. There are a lot of theories on why that is. Um, a, a, there's a surge of testosterone in young boys between the ages of three and four, and that can um, inspire a lot of this kind of play. But there's also a child often feels so powerless in his or her world. Um, they're powerless over their parents and their teachers and circumstances, and gunplay sometimes gives a child a sense of power. So in my classroom, I found that uh, even if I didn't allow guns, a wooden spoon would become a gun, a wooden block. When we're outside, a stick becomes a gun. And even if you were to take away all those things, a finger easily becomes a gun, uh, which you can't put away. So I made rules, and we, I only allowed gunplay outside when we're playing outside. And the rule was, you could not point a gun at another person because I explained guns hurt other people, but you could point it at a tree or an imaginary monster or up in the sky. And that seemed to fulfill the child's need um, in a way where other people, other children didn't feel threatened. And parents often ask, well, why sword play then? Why do you give them toy swords in a Waldorf classroom? And often teachers do. Um, some Waldorf teachers even make wooden swords, may, might spend a long time um, sanding a wooden sword. And uh, it's not an easy question to answer, but there are a lot of different, a, a lot of qualities in a sword that are different from a gun. Um, Children in a Waldorf school in the autumn often hear a story about the archangel Saint Michael. Uh, you might see it print, um, spelled as Michael. Um, in Waldorf education, we call it Saint Michael and celebrate his festival of Michaelmas. And it's the story of Saint Michael who slays or tames a dragon, different versions of the story carrying a sword made of stars, and he's using it for the good. So when I had, I did have wooden swords in my classroom. I kept them in a closet. We didn't take them out unless a child asked for one. And before they could play with a sword, they, we went through a little knighting ceremony, and I asked the child to put on a silk cape and to sit on a special bench, and then I would knight the child by saying, Harper Alexander, have you been good? And the child would answer, oh yes. Have you been true? Oh yes. Have you heard the stars singing in the sky? Oh yes. Here is your sword, and here I would tap the child on each shoulder. Use it for right to carry the light, not for some silly quarrel or fight. And at this point, I would hand the sword to the child. And this would inspire a different kind of play. So after this knighting ceremony, if another child in the class wanted to be a knight too and went through the knighting ceremony and there were two toy swords, I did allow play fighting with the swords, but the rules were you could only combat with the sword, sword to sword, and you could not touch another person with your sword. We never wanted any child to feel endangered. 
So another difference between um, sword play and gun play, I think, are the stories that they evoke. You know, when you give a child a sword, it evokes I, uh, images of knights and dragons, which is very different from the kinds of stories and violence that uh, gunplay might evoke. I think that's very important. So if you're looking for swords to satisfy that child's uh, urge for weapon play in a healthier way, um, here are some you might be interested in. For very young children, say a three or four year old, this is a silk sword from Sarah's Silks, and it's just foam inside, and it's very lightweight, so even a young child will have no trouble uh, holding it. They can play with it inside, they can play with siblings, no one and nothing is gonna get hurt. Um, and it's covered with 100% pure silk and uh, very bright, vibrant colors. Um, this is another one I like for a slightly older child, four or five. It's got a wooden handle, so it's a little heavier to hold, a little more satisfying for an older child to hold. It's covered with uh, wool blend felt, but there's foam inside. So again, it um, it's, can be played with indoors and isn't going to hurt anyone. And for an older child, maybe over the age of six or so, is a little more responsible and uh, maybe without any baby siblings around. We have these beautiful wooden swords from um, Germany. Um, this one comes in a real leather sheath. And um, this will be enjoyed by children eight to 12. Uh, and it's a great, can be a great part of a night's uh, Halloween costume or for dress-up play. And I'll put links below uh, where you can find these swords if you're interested. So um, if you have any questions, let me hear from you. You can email me at sundaywithsarah at bellalunatoys.com. I'm sure this video will generate a lot of comments and questions. I always love hearing from you. And don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel so you don't miss a single episode. Thanks so much for your interest. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you next time.